If you're in business and you've not thought about the impact of a recession and the pace of recovery, at least on your business, then don't worry, it's not too late. The real impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has yet to be felt for many due to the government support, such as the furlough scheme and the various funding support schemes like C-bills. Although schemes can always be extended, businesses are all going to have to fend for themselves by the time we get into 2022. Now, although the economy shows signs of bouncing back, that's just the 2019 levels. That means that we have effectively seen no growth for over two whole years. Unemployment is lower than expected, but this may change once the furlough scheme ends too. And that's gonna be in September currently. 150 billion has been saved, believe it or not, by UK consumers, but after a few months of cathartic spending you know, and a bit of a blowout, caution may well lead to reduce spending going forward. So what will the impact of Brexit be as businesses start to adjust to the new rules and the costs and also the benefits? And you know, recovery is always gonna be powered by small businesses and our entrepreneurs, given that they account for 60% of private sector employment and around half, that's 50% of GDP. Even after the pandemic is finally under control, these complex dynamics mean that the outlook is still uncertain. And that is something that you have to be prepared for. Even if your business has experienced rapid growth as a result of the pandemic, some people have, of course, recessions and economic uncertainty can offer opportunities for growth. Let's not forget that. But for many, it's been a difficult time. So I put together and I've distilled my 11, got up to 11, started with 10, got to 11, practical business tips to survive and even thrive during recession. So you can emerge with a stronger business on the other side. If you're interested in more content for small business owners and entrepreneurs, please like this video, obviously, and subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know what you think of my 11 tips in the comments or on social media, please follow me. Uh, so what I've done is I've distilled the 11 most effective actions that you can take to maximize the potential of your business and reduce risk during this period of economic uncertainty, no matter what the size of your business. Whatever you do, doing nothing is not an option. You need to take action and you need to do it sooner rather than later. So let's get into it. Number one, planning and focus. I always say this in many of my videos, not having a plan is always a bad plan. Whatever your plan was pre-COVID, it's probably going to need to change. And that might be for better, and it might be because things have got worse. But you need to look at it again. Review the market, the impact of recession on your target customers. Think about that. Or even on your product or on your service and, and how you deliver it. How hard will a recession or a prolonged pandemic, new variant perhaps, impact your business? Make a plan and share it with all of your stakeholders to take them with you on this journey, especially if it's changed, the direction's changed. Ensure everyone is on the same page, basically. This process will also provide insights into who in your team or your stakeholders isn't really pulling their weight and isn't pulling in the same direction. And therefore, we'll talk about it later, who to keep and perhaps who to part company with should you need to reduce your headcount. I'll cover this more in tip number nine. Knowing your collective objective will make decision making far more effective as if an option doesn't move you in the, you know, the direction towards that, that goal, then just don't do it. There's also no time for chasing, like entrepreneurs do, I do it myself, shiny objects or distractions, even if you have a growth plan. Focus your always finite resources on your core competencies and where you can add the most value for your customers. Number two, reduce cash flows. Sounds obvious, cash is king and managing it is key to surviving economic uncertainty. Running out of cash when credit or external investment may be hard to come by can be fatal no matter what potential your business has in the long run. It can take time, resources, and even protracted negotiations over many months. And this can also reduce and slow down progress on the, court, the underlying business. There's fat in almost any business, no matter what you think, and now's the time to trim it. Review every single cost line in your management account. Just go through them from rent to software subscriptions to paper clips. Can you remove the cost? Can you reduce it? And what is the process to reduce it? Review your inventory 
and minimise it, and even review your inventory management systems. Go through everything. As well as reducing costs, slow down cash outflows to reduce your working capital requirement. You know, I'm not suggesting that you, that you pay suppliers late, more that you look to renegotiate and even change those suppliers that can't offer you improved terms. Many of your suppliers, especially if they're small businesses, they may be facing the same issues, the same pressures. So these conversations can be difficult, but you still need to have them and have them as early as possible. Review your inputs and your raw material choices and costs. Now's the time to make changes if you can reduce those costs. That will improve your margin as well. If possible, turn as many fixed costs into variable costs. Basically rent instead of owning if you can. Not always the case, but it, sometimes it's possible. If appropriate, use short-term contractors instead of hiring permanent staff for the time being at least. Make your business leaner and more flexible. As the end, as the end of the day, it's fixed costs that can take businesses down. Number three, increase cash inflows. So this is the other side of the coin to tip number two to improve your cash flow. Ensure that your cash collection is completely on point, whether that's credit control, maybe you've got a credit control function, or just an online payment system that you use. You know, how long do they hold a revenue? Can you change to shorten that period of time? Rein in your credit terms. This can be, you know, involve difficult conversations too, and manage your collections really carefully. You should only be offering favorable terms to your, your best customers. Can you incentivize customers to pay up front or can they pay faster without you know, giving up too much margin? There are new ways to finance businesses through revenues now. Can you improve your margin by reducing your cost of sale? Combining this with slowing down your cash outflows and as well as your inflows will maximize your cash flow and reduce your operating risk. Now, although all businesses should be doing the same, many will suffer as a result of not micromanaging cash flow. You don't need to. Number four, downsize once. I've been through the painful process of having to downsize businesses and reduce the size of the team through redundancy processes. It can be absolutely soul destroying, but it's unavoidable, it's part of business. What can be worse for the team that you want to retain and that you want to motivate is lingering uncertainty about their job security. You know, what you will find is that once your best people start looking for a new job and they get offers, you're going to find it very hard to keep them and you're going to lose them. That can create even more cost and more time consuming disruption in your business as you try and find new people at a very difficult time, especially when they're potentially unproven in your business. So if at all possible, downsize once. And in fact, my experience is cut deeper than you initially thought you have to. And I don't specifically mean in terms of people, I mean across the board. I don't mean your board either, I mean the whole business. My experience after downsizing is that the wheels you expect to fall off and spin off into the distance, they don't, they stay where they are. You and the team tend to adjust, take up the slack. Also, when it comes to downsizing, you have to take the lead and share the pain too sell the flash car and prove that you're all in it together. It is amazing how many business owners or CEOs forget this. Number five, embrace technology and digitize, a big one. The businesses that have been affected most by COVID-19 are those with little or no digital strategy. Many don't have websites, no matter what sector they operate in or at what scale. It's a well-documented issue that UK small businesses are not as productive as they should be due to the low adoption of technology and modern business tools. This needs to change, something I'm also working on in new business, but automate everything you possibly can. This may require short-term investment, but over the long term, technology will empower your business to sell more, reduce costs, reach new customers, hire the best talent wherever they might be, and develop new products and services. You can improve your customer experience or just save time to do what you really love doing as well as running your business. I'm gonna cover customer experience in, in tip number eight. So whether going digital means that you build a website, you embrace digital marketing, you list your shop inventory on a global platform, or even invest in enterprise style business process automation, Failing to leverage technology is a severe competitive advantage. It reduces profitability, which means your income basically, as well as the value of your business if you plan to sell it someday. If you haven't got a digital strategy, then be prepared to wake up one morning, I'm sorry to say, and find that your business is possibly no longer competitive or even relevant. 
In the case of surviving economic uncertainty, I've said it before, go through your management accounts and assess how technology can increase revenue or reduce costs or just improve communications internally or externally. Can you manage your sales funnel better? Is your website and SEO optimized? Can you automate mundane and time consuming processes and things you do at the weekends and integrate systems using APIs? You should be hiring talent based on capability, not anymore where they are and where they're based within a 30 minute commute of where you happen to want to work. We're all now used to working from home on video. Use technology to communicate and maintain or even strengthen relationships with your team, your customers, your suppliers, in fact, all of your stakeholders. Number six, stay in the game. So even in difficult economic conditions, the world we all operate in is dynamic and markets, customer needs and technology is evolving rapidly. In the UK, we've lost, as I said earlier, two years of economic growth despite the bounce back. We will find out in 2022 how spending, confidence, employment and how the economy has been impacted by the end of government financial support schemes. Standing still is just no longer a sensible strategy. You are still in business and you know some people have done it, but mothballing for 18 months is unlikely to work out well in the long term. Recessions are they're great times for some businesses. And for example, if you're, if you're a discounter, a recession can be a good time to launch or test new products or services for customers with new problems that didn't exist previously that they need to be solved or at least eased. Look for new opportunities. You know, keep your eye on the, your struggling competition that they may fail and you can perhaps buy them cheaply or renegotiate with suppliers. Stay in the game and be flexible as downturns can present opportunities that can require you basically to make decisions and move very quickly. So be prepared to do that. Your competition may not be as prepared as you and while they are struggling, you've got an opportunity to take market share, whether that's locally, in your local market, nationally or even internationally. Number seven, continue sales and marketing. When cash flow begins to dry up, discretionary spending such as marketing, as compared to employees, van finance or rent, things you can't avoid, is often the first thing to go. This might be reduced marketing spend, as I said, or continued training of a B2B sales team or the design and deployment of digital campaigns. Although you may need to review budgets, businesses, it's about building custom relationships, it's about marketing, and at the end of the day, it's about selling. And my advice is, insofar as you can, don't stop. Now's the time to maintain a presence in the market. Put more effort into your social media and content marketing if possible. Reach out to existing customers and former customers even. It's far more expensive to find new customers than to sell to current or even former customers. Existing customers are 60% more likely to purchase, whereas the probability of converting a new prospect in a sales funnel is somewhere between five and 20%, just to give you an idea. Go back to those warm prospects that you didn't quite convert. You couldn't get over the line, perhaps with a, a revised offer. If you sell online, use remarketing campaigns and ensure that you're reaching out and engaging with and in providing informative content via email or on social media. Digital marketing provides you with, you know, a huge amount of data and that allows you to avoid guesswork. Make sure that you understand the data and what it's telling you and don't rely on some contractor or some agency telling you what is and what isn't working when they can't show you an ROI. Change that very quickly. Test, learn and build your campaigns. Make every penny count. If the copy, the creative, the placement isn't working, don't let it drag on. Make changes and try something else and try again. So many companies waste thousands or even millions actually on ineffective campaigns with no, no clear return on investment. Then they repeat to the game expecting a different outcome and that's just a sign of madness. If your marketing team or supplier can't demonstrate an acceptable return on your spend, you need to know why and very quickly as well. My advice to anyone in business is always to sell, sell, sell and then just go and sell some more. Number eight, manage your customer experience. When everything is going well, you can get away with cutting corners and a customer experience that isn't quite what you know it should be or, or even could be. Companies with better consumer experiences, they tend to weather recessionary storms much better than those that have basically let it 
let it slide. There's no way of hiding your rough edges these days and the cracks eventually are going to show. Perhaps they're showing already. A flashy brand and clever marketing will also not overcome a poor customer experience, whether it's physical or whether it's virtual, or some convoluted customer journey. The legendary investor Warren Buffett once said, you only find out who's swimming naked when the tide goes up. You want your customers to engage with your brand and be able to seamlessly consume your products or service, as well as access the support they need when they need it. You want your customers to recommend your business, the ultimate form of marketing, and many of you will know this, especially at a time when your marketing budget may be tight, are recommendations. Number nine, review your team and yourself. Nobody wants to downsize their team or make their colleagues or even family and friends redundant. I've been there personally and it hurts. However, your team is likely to be one of your greatest costs and you may have no choice about making some kind of change. As I said in tip number four, try to downsize just once though. You will, you will know who's not pulling their weight and if you have not managed people effectively so that you can actually take them through a process and kept the right records, now is probably the time to start doing that. Employment laws differ materially from country to country, so ensure that you know what applies and how to avoid really expensive and really time-consuming legal blowback several months down the line. The success of your business is always closely correlated to the quality of your team and the way in which they, they work together. So it's really important to try and hang on to the stars for dear life and those that think like a business owner for as long as you possibly can. Now is a good time to look at your, your new plan and whether your current team has what it takes to deliver that plan as well. And this is also really important. And also, don't forget to take a look in the mirror. Do you have the skill or the experience or have you been worn down over the last few months or just the confidence just to navigate through these difficult waters? If not, think about how you're gonna fill those skill gaps, how you're gonna seek support yourself. Don't forget that your team already knows what your strengths and weaknesses are. Number 10, understand your financing needs and your financing options. A healthy and well-managed cash flow is key to surviving any economic downturn. You may have done everything that I've said so far in this video, but there may still be a need for capital such as equity, debt, invoice discounting, asset finance, or even finance for an acquisition. As a former venture capital lawyer in the city, it's Wall Street if you're American, and also an investment banker, I know that, and I've done it myself, I'm doing it now actually, that raising finance takes time, preparation, um, planning, and it involves risk. If raising finance is new to you, then you may also need professional guidance. If you need to raise finance, A, start right now, B, understand all of your financing options, know the market. Your options will depend on your business type, as well as its size, uh, stage of growth, financial performance, the growth potential, the size of the market, and even your location. If you already know that an existing loan is about to be, become something that's difficult to service, difficult to make the payments, don't ignore it, it's really important. Speak to your lenders early and find out if it's possible to restructure the loan. Seek a, perhaps a repayment holiday or can you extend the term to reduce the monthly cost? Although clearly over time the total cost will arise. If you're going to need to raise equity, speak to existing shareholders first and share the plan and see if there's interest. Lastly, get into the detail of your financials and set and track key performance indicators more closely than perhaps you've ever done in the past. Just make sure that you're not surprised by some financial issue that arises, a financial wall, or you know, especially given the time it can take to secure new finance in difficult markets. Number 11, stay calm and execute. Work through the issues systematically. You know, you are where you are and you can do what you can do. And develop the plan, as I mentioned in tip one, and try and stick to it. This will not be the last period of economic uncertainty that you're likely to experience in your career. And you will learn about the weaknesses in your business and possibly yourself. It's possible to come out the other side stronger, leaner, more profitable, with more potential to grow in possibly a less competitive market given that some of your competitors may not have watched this video. I'll see you on the other side. That's it for now.